What's up guys, Garrett here with Dev. We are about to try the SEO assessment on LinkedIn's assessments. So just before we get started, I'm going to Google a lot probably. This is for informational purposes only. You are probably gonna get different questions than I do. They have a random bank of questions they pull from most of the time. Anything else I need to say before we do this? I launched selftaught-dev.com. It is a compilation of all of the monthly projects I have built. Feel free to check that out. Link to the Discord is in the description if you wanna come talk tech or say hey to me. And let's go. So SEO. Also, just so we're clear, the assessment links are down here under your skills and endorsements. If you click take skill quiz, it will pop up with all of the assessments they have. They do have quite a few now, and we're doing the SEO today. Also, if you want to be friends on LinkedIn, look in the description, my LinkedIn will be there too. All right, let's go. All right, Xbox Live Coupon, that's the answer. Um, which search query would be most difficult to determine search intent? LinkedIn Login, Xbox Live Coupon, Microsoft Office 365, or Lax Airport Directions? Hmm. I think it's either LinkedIn login or Xbox Live coupon because LinkedIn login is kind of, in, actually maybe Microsoft Office 365 because LAX airport directions, that's pretty direct. Like you're obviously, you want LAX airport directions. The other three are kind of like, I guess LinkedIn login is kind of, all right, so I'm gonna go with Microsoft Office 365 because that's the one that I feel is the most Ambigu could be interpreted the most ambiguously by search engines. So we're just gonna go with that. Also, if you know the answer to any of the questions that I get, let me know in the comments below. All right, what is one way in which search queries have evolved over the years? Keywords are now irrelevant, nope. Fewer searches are coming from mobile, false. Queries are much shorter, probably true. Most searches are using natural language, also true. I'm gonna go with most searches are using natural language because I'll usually search for how to do X, Y, and Z or something like that. We're just gonna go with this one. All right, what choice is an example of a relative URL? This has nothing to do with SEO, does it? Um, this is a relative URL, so the relative URL is the slash part that comes after the root domain. So like www.linkedin.com, that's like the root, and then anything after that is the relative URL, except this part right here, these are the query parameters. That's why the question mark is there. Anything after the question mark, those are um, like URL parameters. <clears throat> but anyway, it's A. You want to identify which US state has the most search interest in a, for a particular keyword. What tool would help you determine this? Google search cons, uh, Google trends would, cause you can say like, what's a non-controversial -contro word? Kombucha, you could search, you could put in kombucha and it'll show you like a map of where that search term is popular and then like how popular that search term has been over time. All byline dates for articles are suddenly no longer visible on a website's listing within Google. Assuming no changes have been made to the site programming or content, what is the most likely cause? A new site map has not been provided within 30 days of setting up a publisher center account. The site has been delisted from Google search. The site kept updating the date to make content appear fresh without changing the content. Ooh, that sounds like a good reason Google would no longer show the date. The articles have aged more than 365 days without any significant updates to the content or the site. That doesn't sound like a good reason to remove the dates. So this is saying like, why would Google remove the dates? Yeah, that one doesn't sound like a good reason because if it's an older article, you'd want to know the date. Um, the site has been delisted from Google search. Well, then the art, then the articles wouldn't even show up in Google search. Uh, Google News sitemap was not provided within 30 days of setting up a publisher center account. I don't think that has to do with, like the sitemap doesn't have to do with the date showing up on the articles. So we're gonna go with C. You notice a particular product in an e-commerce storefront is no longer indexed despite no technical issues. What is a likely reason for this? A technical issue. The product is out of stock. The keyword is too competitive. Robots.txt is configured to allow access. If it is configured to allow access, why would it not show up? That one, so C doesn't make sense. No title or meta description tags are provided. No longer indexed implies that it was indexed before. So something has changed, right? Uh, the product's out of stock. That would imply there was a change. The t keyword is too competitive. 
I don't think the keyword being too competitive would affect the product being indexed. No title or meta description tags were provided. See, the fact that it was indexed previously implies that that doesn't matter, but the product being out of stock, that would have, that's a change that could affect it. So we're gonna go with A. Um, you have been, although I don't feel like Google crawls the site enough to know when the product's out of stock. But anyway, you have been asked to help a big e-commerce brand optimize their website for search engines. They currently have thousands of products listed on the website. What is the most appropriate first step? Register the business with a Google My Business account. 302 redirect all product pages to a URL containing target keywords. Recommend they add more products? Yes, recommend they add more products. Work on compressing image files. Hmm. So it's not recommend they add products. Obviously, that was a joke. Um, <clears throat> what is a Google My Business account? Let's see. Let's put a space there. And this is drive customer engagement. Engage with customers on Google for free. You get more than a business listening. Your Google business profile lets you easily connect with customers. Um, they're a big e-commerce brand. They probably already have one of those, huh? It doesn't say if they do or not, but that's an answer. So we, I guess we can assume they don't have one. 302 redirect all product pages to a URL containing target keywords. That probably wouldn't be the first step because the product will already have a bunch of its keywords in the, like the title for the product and the description. We're gonna work, we're gonna go with this one. Final answer, because I'm out of time mostly. According to Google, what type of content includes topics such as news, legal issues, finance advice, and medical information? Well, it says according to Google, so I feel like we should Google this, right? KYC. Know your customer. Mm, no, RSS. RSS is probably like blog stuff, right? So that doesn't contain those. YMYL, YAML. How to boost your SEO. That doesn't seem like it's providing much. Let's try BDB. Oh, we probably don't want to go to that if it's on Urban Dictionary. Yep, we're gonna go with YAML. Um, you are planning for a development of an e-commerce website. Which approach would be more beneficial for rankings? Optimizing the front page of your website to drive traffic for um, all category search terms. Optimizing product category pages to drive traffic from individual category search terms. So far, B is looking good. Optimize product pages to drive traffic from individual category. Wait, what's the difference between those two? Optimize product pages versus categories. Just kidding, C is looking good right now. Optimize all pages on the site for a category search term. We're gonna go with C. So I'm starting to not focus as much as I was in the beginning. And yeah. Which approach is not advisable to geotargeting your website? What is GTDL? Generic top level domains. All right. Using a generic top level domain with a subdirectory or a subdomain. I'm going to go with subdirectory because that would. Okay, so there's one reason I'm going with this is because these two are very similar answers. There's only one word difference. So it's probably one of these two because usually they'll try and throw you off with having like three um, questions that have the same, that only have like one word difference. So you're like, I know it's got this part in it, but I don't know which one of these three it is, but subdomain feels right, this one feels wrong. So, I mean, this one feels right, this one feels wrong. So we're gonna go with D. All right, what is a common best practice for handling search results pages, search result pages on a blog's built-in search site? Do not use site search, no. Set the search results to 404, why would you do that? Add a canonical, did I say that word right? Canonical from the search results, search result page to the homepage. I don't think that's a good idea. Set site search results to no index. What is a common best practice for handling search result pages on a blog's built-in site search? Why would you send search result, a search to a 404? 
What is canonical? I need to define that word. Let's see. Definition of canonical according to order by common law. Um, this sounds correct. Canonical sounds like it'd be the right word for this answer. So we're gonna go with the C. All right, what would significantly improve Google's ability to display a non-YouTube video in its search results? Embed the video, wait, what would significantly improve Google's ability to display a non-YouTube video in its search results? Embed video objects with JavaScript conditionals, provide a 150 by 80 pixel image thumbnail image, convert .mp4 videos to MOV, add schema.org video object. You want to display a non-YouTube video in the search results, just don't include a video in your page. I'm gonna go with this one because it's the one I know the least about. I don't think any of these would affect it very much or I think the bottom would, would affect it the most. Anyway, what is an example of a Google search result that can be found in position zero? Ads. Google primary, primarily determines indexing and ranking by crawling which version of a page? The mobile, because they have started doing mobile first, you know? Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, yeah, it's mobile though. Which result is most likely if you use a pop-up that requires a user to take action before you load the content of the page? The pop-up will be indexed instead of the desired body content. That sounds correct. An interstitial pop-up is treated the same as a soft 404. Both the pop-up and the content will be indexed. The pop-up will be ignored and the content of the page will be indexed correctly. But it won't know, I guess it will. I think it'll index the pop-up though. So, do we pass? Whoa, we passed! Whoa! I don't know how we passed these, dude. LinkedIn's not the best at writing accurate assessments is my first guess of why we passed. We are definitely gonna add that skill to our, our LinkedIn because I didn't know I had that skill. I hope this helps you out. If it did, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. Subscribe for more awesome content like this or more front-end developer content slash developer content in general. We've got a Discord if you wanna come hang out in the Discord and talk tech. If you wanna connect on LinkedIn and be friends, my LinkedIn's in the description. I make monthly projects for front-end developers to practice building. So if you want to be a front-end developer or a developer in general, come to the Discord and you can find that or go to self, actually look in the description and I will have a way for you to get that. I do resume reviews if you need me to, to review your resume. Ideally, you're trying to be a front-end developer, but I will try to help you out if you're not just being a front-end developer too. It's gonna to be in a YouTube video, but I will block out the content. I mean like the, your name, your address and all that stuff. So I think that's about it. I will see you next time. Peace. Round one.